Hi everyone, welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton and welcome to another Opposition View video, of course, with Brighton and Hove Albion on Monday night. Pleased to say that I'm joined by AD from the Albion Raw, um, really, really experienced, really uh, well-known podcast in, in around football and football Twitter and stuff like that and a uh, pleasure to have you on the channel, mate. Uh, how are you doing? Pleasure. Yeah, good, good. Looking forward to Monday. Although, uh, like like yourselves, we we hate the Monday night kickoffs. I mean, nothing yeah. says I'm really looking forward to the game of the weekend like a Monday kickoff. Mm. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, you know it kind of passes you all by, doesn't it? Really, but um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be um, um, the fact that Fulham lost last night as well makes takes a little bit of um, pressure. I was good, obviously. When, when you're playing Monday, you're playing last, and it. When, when you're down at the bottom fighting for your lives, sometimes there can be a little bit of scoreboard pressure. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it and we're, we're quietly, quietly confident. Yeah, um, I, well, I was talking, we did, we did a live stream on our channel uh, yesterday on our YouTube and just talking about the game really. And I was, I think uh, I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect from Brighton because after watching Newcastle um, recently and Fulham, you know, been dropping points. So, I just think for Brighton, it, um, I think Brighton, are, are the same as yourself, if I was a Brighton fan, I'd be quietly confident because I think the two below you are far worse, got much less quality in the team. Um, and I can think, I can just, I, I see Brighton as more capable of picking up points. And against us on Monday night, I think you def, if you come out and play against us, you can definitely, definitely get all three if, you know, yeah. if, if you really put your mind to it because uh, as... Yeah. As we mentioned off ca uh, off camera, we played uh, Palace last Monday. Who, who uh, I'm sure you, yeah, I'm sure you will have been hoping that we were able get the to bleak beat, machine out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put the swear <laughs> jar out. Um, I'm sure, obviously, you were hoping for us to get three points because it's like that football, isn't it? You know, you support whoever's playing. Oh yeah, the yeah. Yeah, but obviously, <laughs> well, but we there, were... there's, there's there's no love lost between us and Palace, as has, has, has been well documented. But you know, it, it's I mean, I mean, it's I mean, the game we had against them at our place uh, a few weeks ago. I mean, I don't know if any of you lot saw it, but it was uh, it, it's it's how it's a lesson on how not to win a game, and it was just like. Palace came to them with absolutely zero ambition. Um, they played. I mean, I took a I took a picture at one point of they had all eleven players in their own penalty box on several occasions, and they tried. They, at one point, they tried to break, and rather than going towards the goal, they went towards the corner flag, and it was like, you know, the, it is it, the, the anti football. It was just absolutely horrible, and you know, I, I, I mean, we, and it was the story of our season. We've left left. So many points out on the pitch this season. I mean, we've we've completely dominated games, dominated possession, dominated all the stats. Um, if 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 you if you believe in that thing called XG, we're we're in the Champions League. It's uh, I mean, we're we're creating so many chances, um, and and we're just not converting them and being ruthless enough on on the pitch, which is why we're in the position where we are. Um, and you know the the, the pundits and and the ex pros and. And anyone who who watches football for a living, they they they've deplored it. Come towards our style of play and and, and towards the gaffer. Um, they are saying we're doing a good job, and um, you know we're we're behind him. It's a work in progress. Um, we know what's missing, and that's at the top end. But um, yeah, we we certainly should not be in the position we're in now. Yeah, we'll we'll move on to it later. We'll talk a bit more about Graham Potter, but. Um, I'm a bit of a technophobe when it comes to football, so I, all these new slang terms, I'm not really up to, up to up to date on. But I know it, it does get mentioned a lot. The XG for, for Brighton, and that you do a lot more than, but you just need to score goals, and that's where you struggled, and that's probably why you're down where you are. Obviously, 16th in the league, two places above the relegation zone, but um, Fulham being dropping points, Newcastle aren't looking very good, and um, so it looks like. From from an outsider looking in, I'm not too nervous for Brighton. I think that you should have yeah. enough to stay up. It was the same when I, I spoke to uh, Burnley a couple of weeks ago, and we got beat by them. <laughs> so um, no, what basically what have you made of a Brighton season so far? Because it's obviously been a really strange one. Um, everyone sort of had some unexpected results, whether it's losing games or winning games. So what have you made of of Brighton uh, so far? 
it's been frustrating um, because we've been largely we've been brilliant. You know, like like I said a minute ago, we, we've been dominating games. We've been the style of play which we've got is is certainly eye catching. Um, Graham Potter is not scared of um, blooding any at the, the youngsters. We've had, uh, I think, six academy products make their debuts this season, which is which is which is incredible, really, when you think about it. When particularly uh, in the position that we're in, but you know we're we, we're we're doing things the right way. We're playing a, a great great brand of football. We just need a little bit more at, at the top end. Um, We've, he's been playing um, these these inverted forwards, inverted strikers at the moment, which is basically um, it's allowed our more creative mid players in the middle a lot more space, and and it's been moving the central defenders apart, which I think is just certainly something we're going to try and do with you, and it allows the likes of Adam Lallana, Leandro Trossard, Ibra Suma to that the space to to go forward and. Uh, it, it, it seems to be working for us, and I mean, we did it at United on on on, on Sunday night as well, and we were unlucky not to come away with anything from that game. Actually, and you know, it, it, <laughs> we, we're still fuming about um, a certain penalty decision in that game. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to cast any aspersions about Harry Maguire, but what was he doing there? I mean, it was double jeopardy. It, 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 not only was it a penalty, it was a red card and Mike Dean bottled it, frankly. It was an appalling decision and I don't know what the VAR was thinking. I don't know why they, they didn't like uh, speak to him about it. I don't know why he wasn't asked to go and have another look at it because it was a clear and obvious error. Yeah. But, you know, that, that, but we would have missed it anyway. We missed, I missed, we missed two penalties at West Brom the other day. I mean, that was shocking. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, generally, generally this season, it, it's it's we've been very, very pleased with the progress we're making. Um, we know that the points tally isn't enough. We certainly should have more points on the board. Um, but going, if it's going to, I think Fulham needs snookers now, and I think anyone that finishes above Newcastle is going to be safe as well. Because I mean, when they came to the Amex um, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, they were absolutely. Dreadful, and the body language of the players was as they were coming off the pitch was absolutely terrible. You know, it's like they were almost as if they didn't care. And it was, I mean, fortunately with the radio show that we do, I mean, we've we've been fortunate enough to be at games, um, and that was that was the most relaxed I've been coming away from the stadium all season. It was just absolutely terrible, terrible Newcastle performance, but we made them look bad. Mm. Um, I, I see what you mean there, and when you, it's it's really frustrating to talk about Newcastle because we've lost six points to them this season. We've we've, we've lost home and away to them, mm. and I think um, sometimes you get teams that miss out on something. Like it looks like we might miss out on Europe, um, and you're thinking it's just them games we've lost. We've lost to Burnley at home. Uh, we drew away. We've only picked up one point in all our games against Newcastle and Burnley, and. This season, we've lost the way to Fulham. Sorry, I lost at home to Fulham. And I think that's what's most frustrating for Evertonians is we're just making these teams look really, really good when they're not. Yeah. Um, you know, so... Yeah, yeah I mean, it's been, been similar to us in a way because, I mean, our, our home form has been absolutely dreadful um, and you've been picking up most of your points away from Goodison. I mean, I don't know what you... What, we, what would you put the home form down to? I mean, I, mean, I know that we've... We've, we've drawn too many matches. We've, we've not defended the leads. We've thrown away, um, I think it's 16 points from winning positions this year. Um, it's, um, we're just, uh, I don't know, we're just we're not that experienced in closing out a game sometimes. And I think that um, we've lost a lot of our, we've had a lot of injuries. We've got a lot of defenders missing. Um, we've had, we've had the, the Tarek Lamptey, who's been winning rave reviews up and down the country for his performances, but we've not seen him since since December. Uh, Solly March, he's been out since um, since we bit well, we did you lot of favour and won at Anfield, but, uh, which was nice. Um, but uh, Adam Webb has been out. Dan Burns been out. We've got we've had to micromanage. Uh, Danny Welbeck and Adam Lalana because of their 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 injury record, but yeah, I mean it, it's 
but I mean, and those last two players, do you want those players on the pitch when you're trying to defend the lead because uh, and, and close out a game because that that's what what wins you points at the end of the day. And if you don't pick, if you don't win football matches, you don't get points and you end up in trouble, which is what we've been doing. Well, with regards to us, it's been the magic question has been uh, what what's gone wrong at home, and I think it's similar to to you lot in the way that we've had a lot of injuries. Uh, we, you know, we've got Decore out at the moment. We've had Alan out for large stages. We've had Hammers Rodriguez, who we've, similar to, to your players, we've had to micromanage him and just throw him in. But whenever he plays, he's our best player. Um, mm. Often we'll be missing out a midfield or Luca Dean will be injured, so Calvert-Lewin won't be getting goals. Um, some of our players look a bit isolated. Obviously, I think... So we're similar to, to Sheffield United in the way that we've um, we've struggled with no supporters. The two games we've played at home with supporters this season were Arsenal and Chelsea, and we but we won both of those um, quite convincingly. Um, but I think we lost both of ours. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think both of it. Oh, actually, no, we drew. No, we did. We drew one. We drew one. But uh, I think it was, some of uh, it comes down to quality, though. To be honest, I think that that's the real thing. But I mean, I, I, yeah, and and obviously you you need a little bit of luck sometimes as well, don't you? I mean, it's like yeah. Yeah, I mean the game we had um, at home to Southampton this season, where, where we did have have fans in the stadium. Um, we were we were well in the game. We were looking looking like we were going to get something out of it, and then VAR intervened. Mm. And I mean that <laughs> it was, we've had this happen quite a lot this season, where. Well, we've had penalties given against us for what well, the, the Southampton one. The ref gave the foul outside the area. Uh, the replay showed the foul was outside the area, so they gave a penalty. <laughs> so you, we'll, like, work, we'll work that one out, and then and then against Spurs, um, Harry Kane because he's he, he's the sainted England captain, isn't he? He he couldn't possibly be a nasty piece of work, could he? No. But that 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 arching of the back thing he does, which is going to seriously injure somebody one day, um, he managed to get a penalty for Spurs for for fouling Adam Lallana, oh, mate, <laughs> so, it, out, which was outside the box as well. It makes you wonder so, why it's why it's there sometimes because it can do wonders. It can make you go, okay, this yeah, that was the right decision. And I think we've been lucky with it. Um, there's been times when we've had goals ruled out with it, and but you've gone, yeah, that's rightly ruled out. But there's times we've been let off with it. But I think more recently, it's just like, I think referees are a little bit too stubborn to admit that they're wrong and go and check it again. Um, and that's why the technology was brought in anyway, because yeah. if there's if there's an obvious error, you like it, you bring up the, and I, I was in a, the Champions League, which is a different kettle of fish, but in the City Dortmund game the other night, there was two. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah and, that was so shocking. Yeah, the referee quite rightly overruled his decision in the in the penalty one, and then Jude Bellingham's, which was just that was there was absolutely that was a foul by the keeper. Yeah, how um, like, how how that was how that got, was not given as a goal for Dortmund, I'll never. Yeah. Understand. But I mean, we, we, I mean, I think what we want to see uh, right across the board is more culpability from the referees. I mean, I don't know if you saw the incident that we had at West Brom. Um, oh, yeah, where, I did. I did. Where, where Lewis Dunk asked uh, the referee if he could take a quick free kick, free kick, he took it, put it in the back of the net, and then um, he, he disallowed it. it. The whistle had gone, uh, and before. then it got, then it got, they, then it got allowed, and then it got disallowed again. And yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, we've. We've scored. Lewis Dunk scored an identical goal at Anfield last season, uh, which was given. Um, you see other players given. I mean, he, he he asked the ref, could he take it? The ref blew his whistle. He took he took it and he scored. It Honestly, should have been it should have been a goal. And then, but Dunkey had to come out at the end of the game and said, "Look, why am I why am here? Why am I here talking to you? The you the ref should be here. Why did, why isn't he coming out to explain his decision? Because it was it was a it was a major ricket. Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, I mean, it's just nitpicking, I guess, to a certain degree. Um, it's, you know, it, it's well, VAR was brought in, and we, we was meant to stop these sort of conversations, wasn't it? It's just, it, it's just intensified it. Um, unfortunately, we can't have the conversation down the pub at the moment, but from Monday, maybe we can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, just going back to that Lewis Dunk one because I, I completely forgot about it until you brought it up then. But um, 
Yeah, I, I definitely want to talk about that a little bit more because immediately when that happened, I remember uh, my dad was 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 watching the game and he shouted at me. He said, "This is the most scandalous, one of the most scandalous refereeing decisions I've ever seen." We what we must have watched it back so many times before the game even carried on. We just kept rewinding it back and, and taking another look. And honestly, mate, how that goal did not stand. I'll never know. It, and and when you watch it back, the ball he blows the whistle when the ball's gone in the net. So now you're looking at all now you're looking at all technicalities within the rule book and stuff like that. And I think a lot of it just comes down to the referees are too stubborn. And it's like a little we've me and um me and Paul who, who do live well, streams. That, and... that was Lee Mason, and and, and he, he that was that was Lee Mason who who um, got removed from duties of the week. He, he picked up um, a uh, sympathy injury, I think, and he was removed from duty <laughs> next week. But it was not, yeah, I mean, it was it was a shocker. But you know, that was that was a game where um, you know it was a massive game for us. And we need and we we needed to get some sort of like uh, some points out of it. But um, mm. it was uh, when we, we missed two penalties, so we can't really argue too much. Um, but you know, me and me and Paul who did the live streams on our our channel we were talking about it remember and we were just like it's like a little mafia isn't it it's like they all sit around the table and uh, they, they won't they won't sell each other out they won't say anything bad about each other everything's kept up zip tight but um yeah it's definitely a, a strange one um yeah it, it'll go down in history as a, one of the strangest things to come into football if, if it does carry on with it um but i think they will carry on with it i think that as I said, too stubborn to get rid of it now. But um, well, it will. But I mean, like I said, we just want more culpability. I mean, if you look at the A League in Australia, and uh, the refs are mic'd up, um, yeah. and the, and you get to hear the um, the decisions and the dis- and the decision process. So, but uh, and when when um, PGM have been asked about that in this country, they they said that they they can't trust the they can't trust the supporters, which is ridiculous. I mean it. It's, they can trust rugby supporters. Um, it, there's this, this, like that's a strange, it's a strange this, way to... distrust of football supporters from from the from the governance in this country, which is just uh, it's just outrageous. Um, you know, I mean, you know, we're not allowed to drink in our seats. You could, you can at a rugby match or a cricket match. It's just, you know, we just need to uh, have a little bit of. Uh, uh, they they need to show us a little bit more trust. I think it definitely feels like you're being looked down on, doesn't it? It doesn't feel like supporters are way less, a, a much smaller part of the game now than they were years ago, and it's it's so sad because to say that there's distrust, I'm all for micing the refs up. By the way, um, I, I want to mm. hear what goes on. Um, I feel like there's a bit too much, too much controversy going on that we don't know about, and um, you know what. Sky or something like that, they'd find a way to market it and make loads of money off it as well, wouldn't they? So <laughs> I don't see where the uh, they'd probably get Peter Walton in, wouldn't they, to talk about it on, on a Monday morning? But um, because yeah, he knows what he's talking about, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just moving on, mate. Uh, you mentioned a couple of, of Brighton players there's Trossard, uh, Lalana, Welbeck, Alzati, um, but there's one player for me who stood out uh, is Basuma. Absolutely love mm. that guy, I think he's a magnificent player um yeah yeah he's really really showing how good he is I, I, well, I, cracker against you at goodison as well he did he was fantastic uh, and i think he scored the goal didn't he scored your second um yeah he did it was uh he put it where the spiders live i mean that was that was a terrific goal oh brilliant goal but um yeah i just want to talk about who you think your your player of the season's been so far because for me it's it's Basuma. i know we had a player similar to that in Adrissa Ghana gay a couple of yeah. seasons back and he's now a psg so um but what have you made of Basuma and, and also do you think he is your player of the season or would you go for someone else i i, I think so um i mean it's it's very hard to look past him i mean basically he's he's usually the first name on the team sheet i would imagine um he, the guys just it just He's just a Rolls Royce of a footballer. I mean, he, he just he just purrs around the pitch, breaking it up, keeping it simple. He's got an eye for a, a pass. He's he, he's got a fantastic tackle. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, ill discipline at times, I would say. Um, but I mean, he's certainly one that's garnering a lot of interest uh, worldwide, not just in the Premier League. But I mean, if we can hang on to him next season, we've done really really well. 
um, rumours are that um, we will be looking to cash in on at least one of our prized assets um, in the summer. Uh, and there's big money being talked about, Eve. And if that money, if, and we've got ready-made replacements for him. We've got um, uh, Jakob Moda, who's, who plays in that position. He, he's been playing at wing-back the last couple of games, scored for um, Poland at Wembley last week. Mm -hmm. um, he's got more... He's just Kashido, who we've just signed from uh, from yeah, Ecuador. Uh, he beat us to him, I think, in January. We were we were yeah, strong. Yeah, he, he's he's just we're we we we're, we're just basically bedding him in at the moment. He's been on the bench a couple of times. If we can get if we can get ourselves safe, I suspect he might get some minutes. Um, so, but he's he's a but Moises is a, a very very similar player to, to Eve. So. Um, you know, you don't want to lose your best players at the end of the day. But you know, if we can, if we were to cash in and get, say, fifty million quid for him, or or more maybe from from one of the top sides in the world, um, that money could be invested in a striker, um, which which could help us at the sharp end. So, um, but then you, like I said, you don't want to lose your best players. There's <laughs> the swings and roundabouts thing. But you know, we're not scoring enough goals. We're creating the chances. Um, and, and as Evertonians well know, I mean, spending a lot of money on a player doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be the saviour. No. Um, you know, I, I mean, look, I mean, look at uh, Joe Ellington at um, Newcastle. I mean, they paid, what, 40 million quid for him? He's not exactly falling up any trees. And, and other players have been coming around uh, for similar amounts of money up and down the country. And, and you know, there's no, there's no guarantee there of, is, um, no, no. Of, uh, of goals. A lot of the time, it's you've just got to pick the right player and then you pay whatever the club wants for them. A lot of players aren't worth what the what their estimated value is. I know for a fact, mm. there was a story the other week here, Aston Villa demanded £100 million for Jack Grealish and um, and uh, you know, and people were replying, does, yeah, does that that's, not shin because, that's not because they think he's worth that, that's because they don't want to sell him, which is, is yeah. obvious. As good as a player, I think Grealish is. That that's what you've got to do. You've got to say no. Well, if you want him, you can pay this money. He's contracted to us, and it's the selling clubs. Uh, uh, you know, it it's the selling clubs. Yeah, the, the, selling the problem clubs. is anyone who anyone who who buys Jack Grealish is going to have to install some sort of like anti gravity device around the stadium, because uh, otherwise, I mean, he's just going to keep falling down all the time. Oh, <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, he, he's a weeble, isn't he? Mm, the anti weeble <laughs> I, I I do like him though, but that's just an example that if if Brighton wants to keep hold of Bazuma, uh, he's contracted to Brighton. You know, yes. this is the fee. This is the fee. If you don't want to, if you don't want to pay that, you can't have him. Simple as. But it's sometimes yeah, sure. it, it works. It's it swings and roundabouts when it comes to players because sometimes you get a right player at the wrong time. Um, yeah. A player like Basuma, who's fantastic, and there will be clubs who want to sign him. Um, maybe for Brighton, and I'm really impressed with Brighton, by the way, for the way that they've come up and sort of stabilised in the Premier League. Um, it's a, it's a, it might be a good idea to take that money and invest it and think, okay, can we go from 16th to 10th if we were to? Well, yeah, I mean, but we, we've got, you know, we've got, we've got, we've got other players as well that are, are garnering a lot of interest. So, I mean, obviously, Tarek Lamptey has been gone with a lot of attention. People are very interested in Ben White. Uh, every, every transfer window, Lewis Dunk seems to get sign a new contract to keep ward off the interest. But I mean, I'm, I'm, we're still completely baffled why Lewis Dunk hasn't played more times for England. Because you know, I mean, you look, look, look. If, if you, are you trying to tell me that Harry Maguire is better than Lewis Dunk? No way. It's the same. It's the same. Um, the same thing with Michael Keane. I'd say Michael Keane has, has had a fantastic season, and he's 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 had a, he wasn't even called up for the last the last round of fixtures. But um, I think it just it goes off name a lot, mate. It's it. It's, oh yeah, I mean you've you've got Eric Dyer in that squad. You've seen Tarkovsky right. get in that squad. I mean you know there's, I mean I mean fortunately we have got some decent um, central defenders at, at international level, but um, there there are, there are some that have just been criminally overlooked and unfortunately it does depend we did the way we see it is um it depends on what club you play for a lot of the time because i mean I, uh, you know I, it, we, we thought it was hilarious when the uh, Jakob Moda scored for Poland the other day because it would have reminded uh, Gareth Southgate the Brighton players do actually exist it's um <laughs> it's uh, you know like, they, they seem to have a blind spot on on on, our, on some of our players at times but um 
who, who certainly deserved international recognition, mainly Lewis Stunk. But I mean, Ben White's going, it's, it's going to be the next off the rank, or you've got Adam Webster who could potentially go make that jump up as well. So um, we've got a, a, a fella that's um, Hayden Roberts. He's out alone at um, Rochdale at the moment, who's also um, tipped for great things. We, we, we've got, a, we've always had a really good production line for central defenders at the Albion. And uh, yeah, and we've got another good one there. I do admire though the way, and I think I'd, I'd like it if Evan did this a little bit more. You do go shopping in strange little markets, don't you? You know what I mean? You you sort of like to take a player from different countries or bring them through rather than going, let's sign this really well-known Premier League player or high-level championship player who probably won't be able to perform. Let's pay, let's get a lot of these younger, more hungry, more wanting to prove themselves players. Um, and I can really yeah. admire that. There's the likes of, you know, Saicedo, um, if I'm pronouncing that right, there's... Al Zati, yeah. there's uh, there's Connolly who I think's been decent when he's played this season. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then you know you got the like okay. like ben, ben White and players like that. So I think Brighton, are, it it sort of reminds me a bit of a football manager save, really. You're sort of going round and well, taking. Uh, I mean, what you have to what you have to consider is, I mean, like some the top clubs, so like uh, United, Liverpool's, Man City's, they they could afford to go shopping in Harrods. We can't go shopping in Harrods. We have to go to Liddles. Um, yeah. You can get some really good, and you can get some top value in Lidl. Um, you just might need to like uh, polish it up a little bit, mm-hmm. and uh, that's what we've done. We've got Dan Ashworth, who's uh, at the club as well, who's um, been instrumental in bringing these sort of players um, through and, and identifying them. And you know, and, and Graham Potter is keen to give them an opportunity. And there's, you know, he, he, when he's picking his team, he's not looking at people's birth certificates. It's, if you're old enough, you're good enough. And mm-hmm. you know, we, we've seen. Like I said, a succession of players come through from from our academy and uh, get given the opportunity, and <clears throat> and that's that's Tony Bloom's vision for the future. Uh, I think, particularly in these COVID times, it's got to be a lot of other clubs' um, vision because the money isn't necessarily going to be there for a while because of it. The clubs have all, all posted massive deficits um, in, on the last accounts. So if you can save yourself a few quid by bringing a few through the players from your academy, um, then, you know, that's that's going to be the, the way forward. Because, you know, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of these players we're bringing through um, or, or, or signing young and, and, and developing, um, it, uh, they're, they're going to be, have a massive price tag on them if we if we were to sell on. Um, you know, we've got uh, Jakob Moda came in. He, he's, he's been starting the last couple of games. He's looking, he's looking great. Um, he's been played out of position. That's because we, we haven't got uh, because of the injuries. But I mean, every every player that is within um, our setup, um, one of the requirements is they have to be tactically flexible. Um, I mean, Graham Potter is like likes to like he, he will change tactics around three or four times in a single game and and what you and, and the players need to be like flexible to do that so you know it, it's it's a work in progress i mean obviously we're still operating at the wrong end of the table at the moment but um you know if we can if we can actually get someone who can put the ball in the back of the net on a more regular basis um then we're, we're going to be certainly heading in the right direction i mean we're not safe yet. We're still nervously looking over a shoulder. Uh, you certainly don't follow the Albion for, for the glory. Um, it's, uh, we, but we, we're looking. Uh, if we if we stay up this season, that would be a record fifth season for us in the top flight. Brilliant. Um, lo- when, when we got relegated in, in eighty three, we were only there for four seasons. So if we can um, stay for another uh, for another year. Then we'll have the opportunity to to push forward. The club's got ambitions to be competing in the top ten and to um, get into Europe. Um, and and why not? Because you know you've seen what um, you, I mean, you you use clubs like Leicester as a, as a yardstick to, to, as, that it, it is possible. Um, it's not unlikely that um, it'll ever happen again. I mean, but um, the Leicester title win was was a bit of a I'm not going to say it's a fluke because you you can't fluke a league win. It was a once but, um, in a lifetime thing, though I think, wasn't it? But uh, I think that it, it's it, it gives inspiration to like clubs like Brighton, to like, like Everton, that 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 these sort of things are possible, and you and you can, 
you know, you've got to be, you've got to dream, dream. Basically, your job as a football club is to try and be as successful as possible. It's not, you know, if you if you enter a competition, try and win it. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't matter what what competition it is, be it the FA Cup, the League Cup, the League. Papa John's Trophy, or whatever it is. Um, you know, just to do, your job as a football club is to try and be as successful as you possibly can, and uh, and that's what that's hopefully what, what what we want to do. We want to get we got to the FA Cup semi final a couple of years ago. Um, we want to get to the final and win it. Um, yeah, we're, we're still, I mean, you know, we, we want to give Gordon Smith something else to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you talking about value for money there. I think as an Evertonian who grew up in the early 2000s, I know plenty about value for money because we paid £60,000 for a young lad from Sligo called Seamus Coleman in 2009. And he's obviously still at the club 12 years later and he's club captain. Exactly. And, he, and, he's, and, and he's, he's, a, he's a great player and he's a role model for... Um, that, that is possible. I mean, when you when you see, I mean, Lewis Dunk, for instance, I've mentioned him a few times. Um, he he's a product of our, of our, of our academy, and you know he's he's he's, he's captain. He's he's played for England. Um, you know that's what an example to to the players coming through. And and when you see us like a, the likes of Tarek Lamptey coming through because he wasn't getting an opportunity at Chelsea. Um, you know, people are starting to look at Brighton with, uh, when. Uh, during the transfer windows as, as somewhere they might want to actually come and play because they're going to be given an opportunity yeah. um, which they might not necessarily be getting uh, uh, at Chelsea or Man City or uh, or United it, it's you know we, we, we've got we've got to be sniffing around for those sort of players and to, to make ourselves better yeah um, and just a just a word on Graham Potter because I'm interested to know he was a largely he was quite unknown. I'd never heard of him when he came in, um, and I, I don't think when I don't think when I'd ever when I ever watched Brighton, I thought, yeah, that's Graham Potter. I just I just thought it was Brighton. Um, but I want to know what you think of what you think of him as a manager and how he's doing this season because um, I think he, he sort of flies under the radar in Premier League managers, doesn't he? I mean, he's one of the ones that if you if you're asked to list Premier League managers as an outsider looking in, I wouldn't I wouldn't know I wouldn't know I don't I don't know his I don't know his past I don't know uh, you know his sort of ethos, but he's just... well I mean Gra- Graham is a very young very progressive manager um, he he was a he was a player he was a bit of a journeyman um, he he, play, he probably his highlight was playing for Southampton when they beat. United six two in the in the in the, in the grey shirts game, but um ah, he, right. when he when he retired when when he retired um he went back to, went back to school went to university um he got himself uh, several degrees um including um in uh, one in in, in, in uh, emotional intelligence etc and mm. um you know and he's got a lot of very very left field ideas and um, he he got an opportunity to go to Sweden. He managed with, uh, and he managed at Erskesons, who were then in the uh, Swedish, Sweden, I can't remember, Erskesons, or Norwegian fourth tier. And then he got them up to the Champions League uh, and into the Europa League, sorry, and where they actually uh, beat Arsenal at one point. Um, came over, he got given the opportunity to go to Swansea, had a good season there. And uh, we picked him up from there. And um, he's a player, he's, he he never gets um, never gets too up, never gets too down. He's very level headed, um, and he's got the complete trust of the players. And mm. you know, there was, I mean, football supporters are a strange strange breed, <laughs> aren't we? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's uh, there was what well, because the results weren't necessarily going our way. There was a lot of people who were doubting him. Um, they were giving him a lot of a uh, stick, and they were they said, "Blow no t- times up on the pot of us." Um, but I, 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 we can't see what what they what they were, they were expecting because at the end of the day, it's not Graham Potter that's out on, out on the pitch. We, we, you know, we we're creating all the chances. It's not him missing those chances. It's not him missing the penalties. It's not him um, having goals disallowed stupidly by VAR. I mean, it, it's if the performances weren't there and we weren't creating the chances, then then you could possibly argue. Um, that yeah, maybe it would have been right to possibly make a change, but the performances and the progression, and the way that the club is going, right from the top, from Tony Bloom down to uh, to the tea lady. I mean, we're 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 a club where people want to be. 
yeah. um, and ev- and basically everyone is respected from 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 the top to the bottom of the of the club. And Graham is the the man to take us forward. And we're we're enjoying watching the football. We we he's 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 tied up at the back. He's he's sorted out the midfield. Next season he's got to sort out the the, uh, the sharp end. Mm. Uh, but it's a work in progress, and um, we're we're enjoying the ride. Uh, it's a bit squeaky bum sign when you're down at the bottom of the table and not <laughs> not knowing whether you're going to be in this division next year. But you can all just um, add it up to the excitement, can't you, Aidy? It's well, yeah. Like like <laughs> I say, you don't support the album for the glory. I mean, God, I'm oh, four yeah. years in and like. Uh... <laughs> no, you. Put, do you know what that 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 reminds me a little bit of um of of conversations we've been having this week on our channel because obviously when we played the dreaded P on uh, on Monday. Um, Dominic Calvert Lewin <laughs> Dominic Calvert Lewin missed a good pot of chances there, and of course we drew the game one one. And um, people blaming Ancelotti. I was like, Ancelotti's not out there. He can't put he can't put the ball in there. Yeah. We're creating the chances. It just wasn't getting put away. Um, yeah. So you know it, and it's it's the same. It's the same way. If you don't support Everton for the glory either. You just sort of get sucked into it, and you're there then for life. But. I think when when you're talking there about um, you're down at the bottom, it's a bit squeaky bum time, but Potter has sort of a positive outlook on things. Do you think it helps us, because you mentioned before, that this is almost going to be your longest run in the top flight, I think, wasn't it? You're on four seasons. Well, we, ho- we, we certainly hope so, uh, and long may it continue. At the end of the day, we want to establish ourselves in, in, this, in this division as one of the teams at the top, at the top end of the table. Um, you know, we've, and I don't, I don't see any reason why we why we can't do that. No, anyone um, can. Anyone can. It's uh, but you know it, it's you know the fifth year we the highest ever pl- placing was thirteenth uh, in nineteen eighty one, mm. um, and uh, you know we, we we were speaking to a couple of players on our show about that last week actually, uh, like to Andy Ritchie, and Graham Mosley, and it was uh, nice to catch up with those guys. But um, yeah, I mean it, it's. We, we we want to go go forwards, you know. At the end of the day, no one's got any divine right to be in in, in, in no. any division. Um, every club's going to have good times and they're going to have bad times, and we've certainly had our share of bad ones. We we, you know, we're we're just fortunate to still have a club to support after what happened in '97. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's it's something which we have to look at and 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 remember. You can't you've got to have the bad times to have the good times at the end of the day, don't you? And um, and we're like I said, we're just fortunate to have a, a brilliant chairman who's, who's a bit a lifelong Brightonian, lifelong supporter. He's been a member of his family on the board since um, since the sixties, I think. And uh, you know, he, he's he's in for the long haul. He spent a lot of a, a huge amount of money invested in in, in the club with the stadium and the, and the, the academy, um, and and various other parts of the infrastructure. It's uh, you know we're, we're we're so lucky to have such a brilliant owner and uh, and we're we're very very proud of him and Tony's a top guy. Mm. Um, we've got Paul Barber who's a top guy. He gets a lot of stick, but you know all throughout lockdown, um, it was the Albion who who the club was sticking their head above the parapet and um, leading leading forwards. We got a, a few pouters from certain people who didn't quite understand what was going on, but um, it was. Um, we're, we're we're so lucky to have the leadership that we we have at the club. Um, on the pitch, we're hoping to go forwards, and obviously on the pitch, we're hoping to be Everton on Monday. Yeah, of course. But with regards to this season, I think I think the thing with being an Evertonian is is because we've had we've been at the top of the league before, and we've won a few trophies during our time, and we've always been mm. in the top flight. Um, I think there's the expectation that. If you finish in a certain position, it's too it's too low. But I think for Brighton, is it more like okay? Well, you, we've never really established a long run in the in the league. Let's just try and stay mm. up. Or do you think if there was? Do you think if Brighton had been in the league for the last thirty years, do you think you'd probably be lower down in the table because of the expectation? Because as you said, their football fans are a strange breed, aren't they? And um, I think yeah, absolutely. We've got a lot more, we've got a lot more input than people let on. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, you know, every, everyone's got expectations, and um, you know, everyone's got an opinion. Um, it's just it, it, it's whether that opinion's right or wrong. Everyone's entitled to it, but um, 
at the end of the day, we 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 know we know we know who the club is. We know um, where where we've come from, where where we where we're going. Um, and like I said, there's, there's no divine right to success for anybody. I mean, Everton could quite easily have a have a season scrapping at the wrong end of the table, we or are. rather, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's you know it, it's people want to want everyone wants to voice an opinion, and particularly in these days with with, with, the, with the social media channels and YouTube channels and everything else, everyone it's very easy for people to to voice their opinions, um, and um, you know, and sometimes. Uh, those opinion, those opinions can get some some traction, rightly or wrongly. But mm-hmm. it, it's uh, but at the end of the day, we, we're all for um, we just we just want to we just want to be the best we can possibly be, and um, and that's what we're doing at the moment. I think that's the right way to look at it. AD is, and I think that's what's been this season. Is I think our downfall is often we expect too much. I think let's just leave it and not put a not put a number on where we want to finish or how many goals we want to score or how many teams we how many games we want to win let's just see how high we can finish because that's what it's like this season it's also just everything's sort of hanging in the balance isn't it and uh, anything can happen mm. but let's talk about Evan a bit more I'm interested to know what what you've thought of us this season and um where you think we're going wrong and where you think we're going right really um, it's progression, isn't it? Um, Angel, you've you've got you've brought in Ancelotti. He's doing a great job, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got you've you know the the, the the signings that he made in the summer were certainly eye catching. I mean, I, Hammers was just was was he's one of my my favourite oh, players of wow. all time. So I mean, just to have him in the yeah. Premier League is is, is wonderful. He scored a fantastic um, goal against Pat, uh, the P word on on Monday. As well. <laughs> yeah, the burning smell from up the road. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I think that it's, again, very similar to us. It's a work in progress. You, you know, you've got, you start the season like a train. Um, you, it's tapered off. You, again, you've had injuries. So obviously, with this, this truncated season where, where, where everyone's playing a lot more, get more games more regularly, um, it's going to have its toll. Um, it's had its toll on us. It's having its toll on you. I think you're probably... You're, you're you're in that conversation for Europe, and I think that's a good start, and that, that's where you need to be. Um, unfortunately, you're going to lose on Monday, um, which is going to is going to scuff you. Um, <laughs> he says, um, but yeah, that will. I, 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 I've I've always enjoyed Everton. I think I think um, you do you, the club goes around things in the right way. Um, yeah, I always has. But I, and like that, I mean, it, it, you, I mean, as an Everton supporter, you you want to see progression. You want to see it, you going in, in in the right direction and not stagnating. Um, just accepting mid table and anonymity every season. You want to be pushing. Um, and like I said earlier, your job as a football club is to be as successful as you can and try and win things. So basically, you need to start looking at at the cups and say, yeah, right, right we're going to have a red hot go at those. Yeah, well, it, it it comes down again to expectation, I think, and I think people, football fans, expect everything to happen now, don't they? It's mm. it, rather than thinking about, you know, okay, well, you know, you can see progression here. This is the first time in years, probably in my lifetime, mm. that I've felt genuinely optimistic about where we're going as a team. Yeah. Even when we do drop points or we lose five or six home games in a row <laughs> or or something like that, <laughs> it's. You know, we've got a world class manager. In my opinion, he's in one of the he's one of the best in the league, if not Europe. Uh, what he's done with yeah. it, what he's done with this side this season is remarkable. What he's done with Andre Gomez in midfield and Alex Awobi yeah. is just fantastic. He, and well, the thing is, he's been given an opportunity to mould the club as well, isn't he? Exactly. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's normally a gun for hire, and he goes in at, 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 at top clubs around around the world. The the uh, the likes of the Milan's and uh, Real Madrid and Madrid and, and and the top clubs, you know, he he's been moving around, and he's been dining at the top table for a long time, but he's actually been given a project and, and a, an opportunity to like uh, build a club, yeah. and um, I, I think that's a project which he certainly enjoys, uh, and I think he might be there for for a while. Mm, well, I hope so. He's uh, he's very keen on Everton. He often talks about how yeah. much. Well, um, they want to go. They want to take you to the new stadium as well, won't they? Yeah, so I mean, uh, of course. That's that's underway now. Uh, all the planning permissions being granted, and yeah. we should be in there. Been in about three years, I think it is. I think it's twenty four, twenty five. It's going to be the first season in there. Um, but when it comes to him, he's he seems like 
he's happy where he is. He likes Everton. He likes the. He loves where he lives. <laughs> if you can find everywhere on online, he's always talking about where he lives. Um, <laughs> we've signed four players in the summer who've been fantastic. Four of our best players: Ben Godfrey, um, Abdoulaye Decore, Alan, and Hammers Rodriguez. If we mm. can get another four like that in the summer, then we're, we're looking really good because. We're still using Marco Silva players and Ronald Koeman players, even some Roberto Martinez players. So it we just need to get, just bear with it a bit longer. We've got a fantastic manager here. It's not yeah. going to happen with miracles. Just, uh, it's just hands of all players, the way. <laughs> yeah, we, need, we just need we just need to hang on and hang in there and and be patient about it and trust the the process because you can yeah. see this season. Sometimes the season we played absolute champagne football. And we've been fantastic and uh, we've blew teams away with our performances. But mm. uh, Ancelotti's had to try and grind results out of games with half a team at times. Yeah. Push players out of position. He's played players who he knows aren't good enough. He's just mm. trying to get as pick up as many points as he can until we're able to get a few more players in because um, yeah. it, it's for, for where we want to be, you can't do it with mediocre players. We need Ancelotti's players. We need players like Alan yeah. Hammers and we need a full squad of them. And when that's when that's the case, I think we just need to, to bear with what it is. He brought his son in as well as assistant manager David. David Ancelotti, <laughs> who's about uh, he's in his mid thirties or something like that. But he, okay. he's slowly standing next to him on the touchline and he's coaching him. So I'm hoping that the Ancelotti uh reign can stick around at Everton for a long time because I feel like the club was built for him, to be honest. He, whenever he talks, well, maybe so. Whenever he talks right. at press conferences, he uh, he seems to just bleed Everton. Really, he loves talking about the club. He seems to say things that you're thinking as a supporter, which when you're a football supporter means the world to you, doesn't it? Um, mm. uh, yeah, I, I absolutely love the man. I think he's fantastic. But um, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> I, honestly, mate, it's well when you've when you've dealt with people like Cumin and Allardyce, even. Which, which we don't <laughs> talk about anymore. Um, yeah. When you've dealt with things like that, to see this world class manager come in who's got a genuine sure. style of play, it's just yeah, it's good. It's the little things. As long, that, just as long as you lose on Monday, that's I, I, yeah. I, I, that's all I care about right now. Well, I keep I keep um, talking about it, and I know you've got three points there as well. But our first win at Anfield since '99, no manager's been able to do that. So that was that meant the world to me because I've never seen it. Um, I've never seen us never seen us win there. I haven't seen us beat Liverpool since 2010 when I was nine years old. And um yeah. I've never so I'm it's just meant the world to me that he was able to take a team out and beat them, which is a massive step forward. Even if yeah. you know we don't get into Europe, you can look at that as we've achieved something this season. Yeah. Which might just be the first rung on the ladder, but it's something. Because previously it's flipping on the way. Okay, up. well, let's let's hope that uh, the Albion continue to move up the ladder and mm. uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. But I've, I've, on that note, I've I've got a I've got to call it time. Yeah, you got an, uh, a quick score prediction for me, Easy. Yeah, free two. Albion win. Too. Fair enough. Um, yeah, hope you did enjoy it, guys. Obviously, make sure you check out <laughs> Easy. Uh, go and go and check them out. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the Toffee Blues, and we'll see you in the next one.